Hey, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at an Illinois 21 Joule uh, vintage pocket watch. Behind me is the Illinois Watch Company. It's an old photo from uh, Springfield, Illinois. Or right over there behind me. Beautiful old watch factory. Um, and this watch is a 21 Joule pocket watch. As you can see on the left hand side, it's a grade 107. There were uh, 1,200 in this quantity, in the run quantity that, that uh, was represented. Total production is only 6,100. That is extremely low for, uh, for uh, pocket watches. Usually they ran about uh, 100,000 or more. Again, it's a 21 Joule. It's in the hunting position. Um, and it is a nickel plate lever uh, escapement or lever set, I should say, not lever escapement. It's lever set. Um, it is adjusted. Uh, it's adjusted to temperature and it's adjusted to positions. It doesn't say on the watch how many positions it's adjusted to, but it's adjusted temperature and positions. And um, surprisingly, it's not a railroad grade pocket watch. Now, someone wrote me the other day and said, hey, if they're railroad grade pocket watches, um, then 12 o'clock is usually at, on the pennant at the high position. So, and they're usually like this, they're open. Um, and and uh, so it's not a, a case, of, there's no cover on the watch because uh, they didn't have covers on the watch for railroad grade pocket watches. But not right sure about that. You guys can tell me whether I'm right, wrong or other. Anyway, we're going to be looking at this watch today. Uh, it is a gorgeous watch, very nice regulator on this watch as well. Uh, sent to me by a gentleman named Ed. I give you the first names only because there's a lot of Eds in the world. So if you try to find him, good luck. Ed, spelling is E-D. Let me just spell that again. E-D. That's Ed. Anyway, so Ed uh, passed this watch along to me to uh, to restore, get going again. Uh, there were some issues with it that he noted. Um, and I'm going to be taking this watch uh, apart in this video. Uh, perhaps uh, this will be one big video, uh, or I'll make uh, part one and part two, depending on how complex the uh, problems get with this particular pocket watch. Anyway, what's kind of cool is that old factory behind me is uh, they had a lot of light in those factories. They had a lot of windows in those factories and they were all brick back in the day. Uh, I don't know if this factory is still in existence or whether they've plowed this down and put in condos. Who knows? Um, but beautiful old uh, watch factories um, and set up to be very, very uh, productive. So they had good production engineering there and they made sure that uh, the watches that were built were built to a uh, high quality. So this is a very, very nice uh, uh, watch. It's got a, uh, I think it's called a false plate in it. Uh, the bridge plate is false. Uh, let me get my, my infamous tweezers. Where are my tweezers? So as you can see here, I've got one plate here. I've got this. The second plate looks like it's here, but it's actually these two plates are attached to each other. There's a plate on the bottom between them and they're attached. So I'll be taking that apart and having a look at that. So I should be able to unscrew these two screws here and lift up the plate that's uh, holding the uh, the seconds wheel and the escapement over here. So uh, I don't know how much work has actually been done to this watch in the past. Um, it's pretty old, so we're just gonna take this apart, have a look at it and uh, go from there. Anyway, so a beautiful Illinois pocket watch. Um, I'll flip this thing over for you just so you can see what the other side looks like. And there you go, the watch is, uh, the face is not in that great condition, it's got a couple chips in it, but in general it's not too bad. Uh, those chips could probably be repaired, um, but I did not ask the gentleman whether he wanted me to attack that or not. He may want to leave those chips in there. Um, he said that he actually used this, um, this watch on the, I think he called it the Short Line Railroad that he worked on. So, um, as you can see, there's a... Uh, the, the hour hand is going from 1 to 12, but there's a minute hand there that's uh, going all the way over to 60, where the red numbers are five minute inter, five minute uh, intervals. So it's a pretty cool uh, pocket watch. And it's lever set, as I said before, so you have to take the, uh, the case, the top off here, the, uh, the crystal off, and then pull the lever out to set the watch. So let's get working on this and get it going and get this back to its impeccable condition as a pocket watch. And thanks for watching my channel and thanks for watching my videos and please subscribe hit the like button it all helps 
And if you want any of my service, just let me know at uh, JD watch service at gmail.com jd watch service at gmail.com so you can send me uh, information there and comments as well if you want um, aside from youtube thanks a lot and let's get at it all right here we go let's get at it so um the watch is actually running right now which is not good so i'm gonna have to take the back off i've already sort of loosened it before and it was just ticking away just a tiny bit i think there was just leftover juice leftover juice in the watch so I should have probably brought all my tools over closer to me because I know I'm gonna whack that camera I always do that but so be it my friends so be it so I'm gonna see if there's any more power left in this watch and that I can possibly remove I got my coffee cup here too for the occasional sip of coffee so I just bring the power down on the watch just a bit here. And uh, maybe I'll try not to talk so much this time. Eh? But then I'll get in shit for not talking enough. Uh, that's pretty much all the power on this watch. There. So that's a nice little movement. So I'm going to um, flip it around the other way. i got to loosen the dial, dial here. Just loosen it up just a bit to get it ready to take off. I want to remove the hands first, the hands, and I find it easier to take these dials off with my, um, without gloves on. The gloves kind of, they're great when you're working on the watch to move stuff around, but when you're removing a dial, forget it man, it's a lot easier without the gloves on. So there's the dial there, so I want to set that again to uh, the right position for there's a lever for the lever set mechanism and I should just be able to move that around and there it's set now and I'll move that to the 12 o'clock position just to remove that lever and uh, there we go it's at 12 o'clock um, and I need to get my my really nice Bergeron Poratec dial removing protection device the DPPB and also my little tiny piece of I think I had a little piece of paper from yesterday there it is a little piece of paper and that'll help me remove the second hand the second hand looks really sunk low so it's, it's odd but it looks pretty sunk low so I may just put the um, this close to it and pull it up because I don't know whether I can get under there with that second hand sunk that low. Just be very careful. writing it up the stem of that second hand right now there we go and is that thing magnetic i don't know to demagnetize that later so just put the hands inside of the crystal here get rid of that it's got some um the number six in the middle of the of the dial here so it's a ancient pocket watch Grab this here and then try this again. These are the plastic protection thingamajabis, jabby doohickeys. And like I did last time, I was using um, a thing of beauty, using my larger hand removers. Hand removing is kind of, you got to be very careful when you're removing hands on a pocket watch. It just, it's kind of. You got to put pressure, the same amount of pressure on both sides. You don't want to bend wheels or bend things, so you want to make sure that it comes off nice and smooth um, and that you don't have any issues. So, like that, pop those off. Like I said, I think yesterday in my video that I just basically grabbed it from the uh, inside so you don't mangle anything. Very carefully move this out of the way and put that back where I got it 
for next time and put this back where I got it for next time, the world's smallest piece of paper. There we go. So the hands are off and protected. And push that lever back in here. And I should get my really nice case holding uh, device. Hang on. So this is the uh, Bergeron gelled watch um, movement holder, case holder. Um, it's pretty cool actually. It's it's probably manually used for uh, watches, not pocket watches. Um, and I haven't done a watch in a couple of weeks um, since I did some of my old vintage watches and worked on those. So, it's, uh, so this is really handy for that. Um, and when you flip that over and put that down like this, there's no chance of the dial bit being damaged or marred or anything, right? So, but again, I'm having fun with the uh, with my gloves on. I may have to take these gloves off to get this to get the dial out. Just move it ever so slightly. Oh, that's the case back. I meant the case back. Use the right terms, Mister. I polished this already, by the way. So it was pretty mangled and dirty, uh, but I polished it. I didn't want to remove too much metal there because there was there was uh, some symbols here on here uh, engraved or whatever symbols and there's still some scratches here but I'm not sure whether that can be gotten rid of if this were my pocket watch I'd probably try to get rid of all of that and there's a dent there as well that I'd probably try to work that dent out as well so but I don't want to be playing with someone else's pocket watch in that manner so uh, what is this here this is the screw. So let's just, it's weird looking because of the angle, I think. So I'm just going to remove the dial screws here. And these are K screws, actually. And again, it's Hercules, the amazing Hercules put these K screws in. I slipped, but I went the right way. It's always a good thing. So, anyway. I don't have to put too much downward pressure on this. And that's nice little nickel plates there. Nickel plate. This one here is a is, is basically a, a watch case half screw. So this would um, just screw in. It looks like somebody it doesn't look like this comes with this watch. It looks like it's just a, a newbie install. For the watch, the watch case half screw. And now this movement should just slip out like that. There we go. And um, I can work on it while it's in here. I don't want it to puncture my thingamajobby. So but the first thing I'm going to do again is take out the the balance bridge. I'm going to call it. I want to say, and I'm going to use my dunker tank to hold the balance bridge um, because my other the balance bridge I've got over on the other side is already being held in place um, by by my other balance bridge so and I'd like to get the all the stress off the bridge when I'm doing this so I'm just going to very carefully remove this balance bridge here and then I should put it on the in the movement holder while I'm doing this but and put a little bit of tiny bit of pressure on the back on the bridge like this so you can so that the uh, pivot doesn't come out of the jewel hole there we go and i think i've got a little i'll just put the screw right on the side here i'll probably forget that later <laughs> and i need to well, there's a chat there's a ring a protective ring on the outside that I should have removed first I didn't see it right away but I should have removed that ring it's no big deal the ring is off and now the balance is exposed so let me just grab the whole balance like this in its entirety actually it doesn't want to be grabbed like that so I'm not going to do it, it doesn't want to be grabbed like that I don't want to do it I need to get it out of there though. And there we go. Nice and easy. Turn this around. And then lower the balance here onto the tack. If 
find the friggin' hole. There we go. So the balance is resting on the tack, and the, uh, the balance bridge is resting on the tack, and the balance itself is resting on this nice comfy bed here of material. I need to make myself another one of those things that I had in the other watch. So and if I want to take a little less stress off the uh, watch, I can raise this up a bit more, like so. And this just takes 99% of the stress off of that hairspring. So I'm going to move that out of the way again. I don't like to have the hairsprings and the balance and all that stuff in the way while I'm working on the watch. So that's two watches over there with balances that are exposed. Now, I don't want to put a hole in this, so I'm going to get my uh, famous number 58 Myers movement holder that I know you guys all love. I've been bragging about it for a while, but you get, you got to do things in order though. So before I do that, let's take the face off. And the last watch I worked on, there was a problem because one of the dial feet was, were gone on the face, which is not a good thing. So, so I'm going to see if I can repair that, but it may take a little while. I'm no dial foot expert. Let me take the screws out though very carefully. Come on, grab. Looking for where the thread or the doesn't want to grab it. Pick a different screwdriver here. One that's just a little tiny bit bigger maybe. Nope. Bad move. Go back to the other screwdriver. I found a bunch of dial washers. Oh. I found a bunch of dial washers uh, today that I didn't know I had. I got a lot of parts. I just I need to do an inventory so I can see how many parts I really have, and, and uh, that way I don't have to hunt for parts if uh, if there's no part hunting issues. I don't even think there's a screw. So this one is also missing a dial screw. Why do why do these watches? How do they miss dial screws? It's from sloppy watchmaking. The watchmaker basically puts... Oh, so this one's also missing a dial foot right there. My God, that's two watches in a row missing dial feet. Stop it. You're going to cause me to have to buy one of these soldering benches for dial feet. And it costs a lot of money. Um, at least this one has got a dial washer, right? It's got the washer right here, which is nice. So the other one didn't have a dial washer. And I'll just take this out here. And I may want to remove the cannon pinion on this one too. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I think I'll remove the cannon pinion right now, Jerry. Right now. Well, I got some structure still there. And I can put this down on the pad again and get my famous, very famous cannon pinion removal tool. So I'm praying for an easy removal of the cannon pinion because it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you play with this bugger and it just keeps acting up. There we go. Came out. Cannon pinion's gone. When I pu push pressure on this tool as well, I make sure these halves that have the pressure are not putting any pressure on this on the on the minute wheel here. So the pressure is on this side and this side here, not on the minute wheel. And then this pulls the cannon pinion straight up, which is nice. So it's a good tool. As all my tools are it's a good tool. And as you've seen over the years, I've got quite a few tools. To show you my this this tool here, which is kind of cool. I think this tool also allows you to remove cannon pinions, but it's just a different kind of tool. It grabs, it's a, it's a hand remover, I believe, but it also said it's for something else. And you just wheel this to size it, like that. And then you, uh, and then it pushes down like this. So it's a vintage tool and it's in mint condition. I think I need to oil it, but it's in mint condition. So <coughs> you can never have too many tools, right? 
exactly. Now I don't have to worry about things falling apart. So let's just take apart all the stuff I'm worried about. Because we're going to clean this watch today too. And uh, supposedly there's an issue with it. I was told by the owner that uh, there's bent something or other. So I'm going to go in there and see what's, what the heck is going on. And uh, let's see if I can... Uh, I'm gonna, today I'm going to do it different. Today I'm going to take this plate off first. Um, but before I do that, I've got to take off the... Uh, is that called the crown wheel? I can't remember. And then, is it left or is it right? This bugger. Alright, I'm going to take this off. I can actually remove the uh, plate without removing that wheel. These watchmakers that people go to, they're probably jewelers or something. And they screw these screws down so friggin' hard that it's almost impossible to get them out. So it's, I hate when that happens. I hate when that happens. So I don't have to take this off to lift it out so I can put a little more pressure on it later. So i just going to remove these screws here. Hopefully not have to use my Herculean arms. I just started doing curls again with 25 pound dumbbells, which is kind of nice. So I was using 10 pound dumbbells. Um, so I've got a problem with my left hand, Dupuytren's contracture, it's called, because I'm part Swiss, Norwegian, Swiss, I'm, I'm part Swiss, and so my little finger gets bothered by that. Um, it's not curling in or anything, so I don't have it that bad. But it's a pain in the butt, um, and i got to keep care of it all the time. And especially if you're doing watchmaking and playing guitar, the last thing you want is for your hands not to work. It all started five years ago. I was so depressed I stopped telling jokes for one day. That's how depressed I was. <laughs> so I said, well, this is life. Life and the pursuit of happiness. So when you're taking a plate off, um, I'm going to fix my lighting because it's kind of giving me dull lighting on one side. But it's always good to uh, approach the plate. My gray hair is on the side. From the side that the that doesn't show. And use a screwdriver that's small enough to just wedge in there. And then you can just go like that and shim the plate up. I'm hoping that works. Is that part of this? No, I got one more screw to take out here. What the heck is going on? This thing has got a ton of screws. So that's the high screw. So I'm going to have to look at that and see if that's longer than the other ones, just for the halibut, as they say. Let me see. Nah, it's not, it's not longer. It looks the same length, but I'll put it over on the side more. Now the thing should lift. There we go. Now we're lift. Now we got we got lift off, ladies and gentlemen. Lift off. There's the plate. See, I didn't have to take the ratchet wheel off. That's what it's called. But I will unscrew that later. Uh, and I just put that over on the side, and now I can pull up the center wheel and have a look at it really quick. Oh, look at that center wheel thing of beauty. Take the center wheel off, and I'm gonna just. I take this wheel off here and this looks as well looks fine and this looks like there has been a jewel replacement here or something this one here looks new but uh, that might be what's wrong with this watch uh, may have had a bad jewel replacement and like I told you this is a fake plate so it just makes it look more skeletonized but it's really a fake plate so again more Herculean force to get those screws up Try not to hit the plate with your screwdriver because you will scratch it. I don't want to have to buff the plates, which is something you can do. Um, and the mainspring, I guess, was the owner said the mainspring was shortened. So you just put a little pressure on the top here with a toothpick or a piece of pegwood just to keep the uh, pivots down as you're doing this so you don't accidentally ride this plate sideways and then and then the pivot comes up and you ruin the, uh, the pivot so if I can pull this straight up it would be great there we go and I'll have a to examine this under my microscope to make sure that there's no problems with the jewels here 
and get that out and get this one out and then I want to take out the pallet fork and the pallet fork actually has some uh, the pallet fork has got a cap jewel on it what the heck is that all about ladies and gentlemen the old pallet fork cap jewel so I spent the morning hunting for jewels and I went to some guy some dude had the seats jeweling set complete but with very few jewels in it so they just have a whole lot of uh, empty any empty tubes so I was and he, and he wouldn't show you which tubes were empty and which ones weren't so you're gonna get ripped off because basically you're gonna pick this setup and then and, uh, realize the jewel that you want isn't there so, and then you'll be pissed off for a year there we go Let's see if that comes up don't do this to me you're working fine there we go and lift the pallet fork straight up don't put any angle on that pallet fork like that because you don't want to break the pivots in the pallet fork and there's all the jewels and I'll look at those under the um, microscope as well and take out take this apart and I don't think there's anything fancy about this particular uh, winding mechanism so just take this out here like that and I'm gonna flip this around so I strip this baby completely Eep. there we go and I'm gonna take a picture of that because the picture is a thousand words and I know if I don't take a picture of this and somehow when I put these this back there could be issues um, again I may not take the springs out because I'm worried again with these old watches that you can damage the spring um, but I will wash the movement and probably leave those springs in place uh, that way I don't have to worry about losing it uh, but I'll make sure it's all cleaned up um, and I will take out the uh, minute wheel because you should do that it's something that you should do and see if my screwdriver is good enough for removing this minute wheel you gotta make sure you dress your screwdrivers all the time as well that way they're flat and they can grab the screws properly and you won't have issues trying to get those screws out this one here just seems like it wants to rotate and not do anything nice nice so that's a problem which means I may have to find a bigger screw for that this one here seems to work fine so I'm just gonna put this screw way over here and so this screw here is not actually in it's not it's been tapped or something right so so that's not good so what I'll do there is put a little tiny downward upward pressure on this on the wheel while I pull the screw up once again I'm going to blame the previous watchmaker for this who probably did a shitty job when he took the screw out there we go I'm going to look at that and I may, I may, there's a little hole there, but that's, that the thread in this hole is stripped. So that's a note to file, another note. So I should take some notes when, right after I remove the minute wheel here. I'm going to take a few notes, put this over in the side here. There we go. Nice and easy. So, so far, there I'm not taking up any more. <laughs> so far, what we have, uh, I'm going to look under the microscope to see what we got, if we have any problems with the, uh, the movement at all. So, there we go. That's the movement. Taken apart. Just needs scrub-a-dub-dubbing. 
but I'm going to get my notepad out here and I'm going to go to a new page and I'm going to write Ed down, right? The page says wash racks, doesn't make sense. All right, so this is Ed. E-D, and I told you how to spell that earlier. So let's take some Ed notes. All right, note number one. So it needs dial foot, right? Dial foot. Missing. So, lucky this morning I ordered a dial foot replacement tool from AliExpress. Just said, okay, buy it. It's like 80 bucks. But I still need to got to find some dial feet. I thought I might have a whole whack of them, but I, I don't. I'm going to have to dig in deeper to see if I do. So missing uh, dial foot missing, um, and then I've got a small screw, screw, and that is that small screw is holding down the uh, minute wheel plate. Wheel W H L plate, right? And I also have a one of the the dial screws is missing. And that should be pretty obvious which one that is. Um, and now I'm going to have a look at the jewels to see. And there's also a dent in the case back. I'll put that down. And is that it? I can buff up the. Um, I can buff up buff up this case now that it's apart. So buff this up nicely so it's looking brand new which would be nice for the owner and <clears throat> now i got to go dig into the uh, jewels to see if i have any jewels with problems so i don't think i'm going to record the jewel digging in part because that's got to be the most boring thing to watch i think my wife fell asleep three times i asked if you want to watch my video on uh, the one i made today she goes sure she foolishly said sure i'll watch your video and then i started playing the video and uh and she's like like that it's like oh my god bore ring so especially trying to look at each individual jewel so but as you saw yesterday i've got i, I proved i proved that i do have a uh, a very nice microscope it's like a two thousand dollars used and i can uh look at the uh, hairs and the fleas you know what right that's how close i can get so so let's go have a look at these plates and see if i got see if i got any issues and i don't want to sip my coffee or heat it up again stand by alrighty then so I had a look at the jewels on the watch and I've got some bad news there's a lot of jewel issues on this watch so it's uh, it's not good at all um, and let me show you what I'm what I'm talking about so I think I've got four jewels with problems two with significant problems but I've marked them I think that the um, I'm going to show you on my phone because it's a little easier because I took a picture using my cell phone zoomed in and <clears throat> if I look at the uh, I look at that jewel there is cracked so I've got the I think that was the escapement jewel lower and that's cracked um, that is the uh, lower I think that's the uh, balance staff jewel and that just looks like it's rough as hell so I'm going to have to have a look at that. This here is, I'm going to cough again, just hang on. Alright, this jewel is the intermediate wheel jewel and the jewel is just missing half of its material. The hole looks good but the jewel is missing half its material and look at the crack in that one. That's the, uh, that's the center wheel jewel and that's cracked all to heck so that's a, some significant jeweling issues on this particular watch it means it's going to take a lot more time i'm looking at these jewels to see whether they're going to have to be replaced the complete settings and if i can find the settings etc etc so i'll be back so i think i'll stop the video here uh, and publish it and we'll go from here